So now comes the moment where I introduce you my absolute favorite feature on ES2015 classes, and it also works in object literals as well. But essentially, you may have seen this already, something called a setter and a getter. Now, in old school JavaScript, before classes came along, we would typically use something such as object.define property, and then we would use a set and a get function, and so forth. Now, with classes, we can in fact use a set and a get directly in the body of the class. Now, what is a set and what is a get? First, we need to know what a property is and essentially how we assign it. This comes down to reading and writing. I don't mean physically reading and I don't mean writing with a pen. I mean the operations that our code is in fact taking. So let's go and have a look at an example. So here we have our console log and we're referencing cart.name. That is called a read operation. We are reading the value of my cart, which we have then defined statically on the class. It doesn't matter that it's a static class. The principle of reading and writing is what we need to know. If we were to, for example, say cart.name equals, we would then be writing, we would be assigning something. So essentially a get will return us a particular property or anything that we like when we request a specific property. Now here we have cart.name. The easiest way would be to just show you what's happening here. Now we don't need our cart.name, so I'm gonna get rid of this and we don't need our comment about array filter. Now what we do want to look at is this cart, and what I'm going to do is create a property called count. Now this might be a really nice thing that we could add to our custom class. So typically we would do something like this, perhaps in the past, where we say, I want a function that returns me the count, and by the count I mean how many items are in our cart. So let's go with the old school way. We'll do return this.items, now, because we want to know how many are in there, we just want to simply return the length property. So we'll take our get count. What I'll do is just replace our dot count for now, and we'll call our get count. So that now says one. If we were to add another item, such as our hot dog again, we can now see that we have two. So we know that the count is working as expected. However, we're not really using a getter. And this is a really nice syntax that you can use. You can also use this in TypeScript, but this is fully available to you in JavaScript, especially with classes and object literals. But it might be that we have lots of these practices where we're saying, I want a function that goes and gets me the count. This will then go and read the new value and then return it to us. So what about our early example where instead of calling a function, we just want to know what the actual count is. Just give me the representation. Just tell me what the latest count is. And you will have to requery this, much like you would have to recall the function if you wanted the latest count. So keep that in mind. Now, instead of our get count, we're in fact going to add a space. And you can see that my syntax highlighting has now picked up the fact that we're trying to use a get. Now, instead of a capital C, we want to use a lowercase c to create a property, which is essentially just a function. The getter is just a function that essentially intercepts when we get a particular property, i.e. we want to read the particular property. So if we save this out, you can see that we have the number one. If we then go and add another item to our cart, save things out, we now see the number two. So everything is working as intended. Now the idea behind these setters and getters is we can actually make our life easier when it comes to our state management. This is just a really nice tip that I like to use alongside our immutability. Now, I actually specialize in Angular, I love TypeScript, and this set get feature comes in really handy when dealing with Angular and building bigger applications, and it can actually be quite convenient for us. Now, at the moment, we have absolutely no way of accessing this dot items on our public object. So here, if we say carts or items, we'll get undefined. We can't actually use the hash because it's trying to access a property which doesn't exist. This hash is internal to the class. So you cannot do anything like this, even without the hash prefix, we're gonna see absolutely undefined. Now, because it's a cart, it might be a good idea that we introduce some kind of value property. So give me the value of my cart. Now for this, we could say get 
value, which is just a function. And because it's a getter, now we need to return something. So if you don't return it, ESLint's going to be nice and helpful. Expected to return a value in the getter. So we actually need to send back a value when we get our carts.value. So what would be the value that we want to send back? Well, this seems quite easy. We could take our return this.items and do something like this. I think that makes quite a lot of sense. We can then save this out. And we now have this.items, which remember is our private property. We're not allowed to access it anywhere, but through using a function, you could use a function if we want. But I like to use this set and get approach because this is nice and concise and I don't need to worry about function calls. Now, the problem with this is we are not freezing any of the state. So again, we could go and start mutating these values. So in fact, what we're going to do is say object.freeze and we're going to freeze this.items on the way out. So if we save this again, we get the exact same array. However, this is a frozen object this time. So this is going to make our lives easier. And if you've been thinking, hmm, I'm not really sure about these object.freeze, it feels a bit clunky, then you're going to really like what's about to happen. So now that we've defined our get of a value, what I want to do is introduce a set for the value. Now the set is not where we are accessing it like here. If we were to, for example, say cart.value and then equals a brand new array, the setter would then be invoked and it would be given this value here. So we're going to take that array and essentially mask it with an object freeze and set it internally. Now, if that doesn't quite make sense, don't panic because we're obviously going to walk through this nicely. Now I'm going to get rid of our static name just to clear things up a little bit. We don't need anything else down here. Now, because we are inside a set, this is the point where we want to perhaps go and update our items because we are setting a value, remember. Now the value that we're going to get is in fact going to be our items, much like we do in the constructor. Now, instead of doing something like object.freeze items in the constructor, we can now do that when we set the value instead. So we're in fact hiding this implementation of freezing our object. We want to create an immutable object that's gonna throw an error if anyone tries to mutate the value after they've access it with dot value, but it also means that when we set the value, we're going to freeze the items. So what this in fact means is where we're doing hash items and then accessing it here, instead of this dot items, we can change this to this dot value. And instead of using object dot freeze, we can use equals items. So this is amazing because it allows us to mutate a local property on our class of value and it makes our code super readable and under the scenes it's going to go and freeze it for us on the way in and on the way out. Now this also means that we can then go and refactor our this.value elsewhere. Now instead of our count which is going to be this.items.length because at the moment the this.items reference that we have here is completely mutable. So we could in fact start changing this dot length property to something else, which we don't really want to do. So at the moment we're using this dot item. So we're gonna change this over to this dot value. So now when we return the count, so let's go down and change our count. What's actually happening here, because we're using the get, we are returning this dot value. So what that's gonna do, it's gonna say, okay, let's go and get the value of this dot value, which is then going to take our private this dot items. So at this point, this is really, really nice because our data structures are completely hidden. We can't access them. And we're also masking the frozen implementation where we're setting and getting so that we can access properties like dot length. We can pass them to the public object and we know that they're pretty safe. The final thing that we can do, we've got this dot items which we're now going to change over to this dot value. So when we add a new item, we're going to take that cart item. We'll take the existing value, careful not to mutate. So we're going to use the frozen value, which is a good practice. We'll pass that item on the end. And instead of this dot value equals object freeze, we can now just leave it as state. 
What we're going to do, and deliberately why I broke this out into a state variable, is because we now know that this is a state, and then we want it to be nice and explicit and pass it into object.freeze. However, I don't really see the point of doing this now. We've got const state equals an array, and this was just to break things into variables to make it a bit cleaner. So what we can in fact do is just completely delete this state variable and just do this. I think you can agree it is looking very nice and a lot cleaner already. Let's also blow away the second variable and replace this. So what we are in fact left with is a very clean implementation. I think you can agree that we don't want to litter our code with these object.freezes everywhere. So using a set and a get allows us to mask these implementation details. And I actually like this pattern with Angular and TypeScript, for example, when we're dealing with things such as observables. And you can actually set the value of perhaps a service. And using a setter and a getter, we can call dot next on the observable. If you're interested in learning more about RxJS, I would highly recommend checking out our RxJS courses where you'll learn tons about observables. And we've also got a lot of TypeScript courses as well, which ties in really nicely with what we're doing here. Essentially, what we've done is cleaned up our data structures to make it look like a nice mutation of our this dot value, but our value doesn't really exist at the moment. All it is is a nice little wrapper function around our private hidden this dot hash items, where on the way in, when we set any new value, so here's a new value, here's a new value, our setter is going to get invoked. It's going to take those items which will be either this array or this new array constructed from array filter, and then simply freeze them on the way in. When we request the value, we freeze them on the way out. So I think this is a really nice pattern. This is definitely my favorite video in this chapter. It's so simple, but it's so powerful at the same time. And of course, I think you can probably start to imagine some really nice advanced use cases that you can use with setters and getters. So that's it for this video. I think this is a really powerful feature and often an underused feature. Of course, because it is a powerful feature and it looks nice and clean, don't go ahead and abuse it. Keep it nice and simple. Make sure it's readable and use them when they make sense. I think here they make perfect sense. We've got our nice getter for the count if we wanted to go and grab this, for example. And we also have our value where we can save this out and you can see that we have our array. So again, that's going to be our frozen array because we are using a getter to go and fetch that hidden property. So we've done a lot of things in here. We've masked our data structures entirely. Nobody can touch this to items. And we've pretty much bulletproofed it by using a setter and a getter to mask this object.freeze. And I think you can agree that this is a small class. However, you may have lots and lots of functions on your classes in future and adding object.freeze on every single line is going to get a bit verbose and overcomplicated. I really like this pattern of keeping things simple and just passing the immutable object so that new representation to the this.value and simply just freezing it on the way in. I think it's a really nice pattern. So that's it for this lesson. In the next one, we're going to dive one step further and introduce some prototypal inheritance. So we're going to be digging into this proto and the objects that we're going to get and talk about some object-oriented patterns for managing objects and our state. So that's it, and I'll see you in the next lesson.